everyone. Uh, hi, I'm Lodi Chat. Hi, and uh, good to you know uh, be able to present another video. Uh, and actually, today this video is more of a book review, right? Uh, I've been reading a lot, and a friend was saying, "Why not do book reviews instead?" Okay, so I decided I shall do it. Right, I enjoyed reading quite a lot, and in fact, uh, it became more of like a like habit. So today I'm going to share with everyone uh, this book, which is the most important thing by Howard Marx. Uh, it's a very interesting book in my opinion. One of the very well written books and uh, provides very candid opinion from one of the most successful uh, investors in distress debt. Right? Uh, who will have realized that investing in uh, distress debt can be very profitable? Right? I find it. Uh, I find that many of the principles being described in the book is very relevant and uh, and it's very applicable to you know amateur investors uh, even veteran investors and there is much to be learned from the book okay how I got to know about it was because uh, one day I was watching Google Talks and I happened to have a chance upon a, a, a speech by Howard Marx and that caught my attention uh, he write memos as uh, most of you have uh, probably have heard of maybe not most of you but uh, at least uh, people like myself who are into investments we probably have heard of the memos at some point in time um, anyway let's, uh, let me just share with everyone why uh, I, I thought that the book is interesting okay, some things number one uh, the book preaches a lot about prudence and caution and it's one of those things that is very lacking in uh, investors today investors you know uh, often in a hurry not to miss the boat and you know, they participate in market swings. You know, when the market rallies, and all of them just, uh, most of them will jump in and hope that they will not miss the boat. When the market crashes and or goes through a correction, then uh, we find that the same bunch of investors are in a hurry to exit as well. And uh, it's fascinating that this uh, kind of characteristic is so prevalent even in today's uh, rather developed uh, financial markets. You know, even though investors are in general more savvy compared with uh, when was that compared with years ago right so prudence and caution very well described in this book the other thing that he also uh, you know has covered extensively is like what makes an investment attractive now let me pose you this and uh, he, he has also described the same in his book that is what is the first thing that you consider or that you will ask you know, like in looking at the investment, what would you consider first if you are presented an investment opportunity? Now take a moment or two to think about it. Right? You're presented an opportunity. And what's the first thing that you consider? The most important thing you consider? Well the answer is price. Yes, price. Price is the most important thing to us right, in considering an investment. Because at the right price an investment can be profitable but at the wrong price an investment can be uh, value destroying can be wealth destroying and I've seen you know uh, in my lifetime people investing in overvalued stocks people jumping in you know pay very high price earnings multiples right for a stock just because they are fearful that they miss the boat now uh, that's you know very much uh, emotionally driven not exactly wrong but uh, we all tend to have this tendency to act on our emotions right so the most important thing is price right another thing uh, I, I quite like uh, what he described about uh, you know averages right? it's very wrong to live life based on averages don't forget the six feet tall man that got drowned crossing a river that was five feet deep on average uh, how marks that never failed to <coughs> to you know uh, recite this same statement in many of his talks and uh, speeches I, I enjoy that because uh, how can one live uh, life based on averages you just need a bad day to wipe you out you know I had a student that once came to me he asked me he said that sir uh, you know how about investing in CFD how about investing in foreign exchange now uh, this is not investment advice but uh, I told him that what's important is that you have to realize average you know, knowing that the average returns is uh, X percent, 
tells you nothing about the future, you know. You just need one bad day, you know, when the market has a severe correction. And you have lost your principle altogether. Right, trust me. It, it's not funny, you know, to, you know, to realize that, you know, in 300 days in a year, and two days would be uh, days where the market goes into a very severe correction. You just need those two days to be extremely bad to wipe you out. Right? You don't need, uh, you know, the other 200 over days, 298 days to be uh, bad days. You just need two of the days in a year to be bad and, you know, in the market and, and you're finished, you know. Especially if you're on leverage position, uh, you get wiped out, you know. And Hallmarks made this very meaningful statement. He said that the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. And that's exactly true because uh, if you're on leverage position, how do you, you know, withstand uh, a few days or maybe days of uh, market downturn? Like not long ago, uh, you know, when Trump announced uh, the tariffs against Chinese imports, that was terrible, you know, the, the Dow just came down like by a thousand, two thousand points. That's, that's scary, you know, imagine if you had been holding a leverage position if you had held a leverage position on CFD, perhaps uh, every one percent decline means uh, it's a few more percent. Uh, you know, if you're on uh, CFD, so living life on the averages is uh, not fun. Right? I emphasize that. In fact, this student wasn't the first one. Uh, there were quite a few others that uh, you know approached me from time to time to ask me for advice, and uh, I find it quite <clears throat> uh, naive. You know, sorry to use this word. If any of my students were watching this, you know, it's rather naive to think that you can make a good return because, uh, you know, you have volatility in a particular instrument. Doesn't mean that you know there is, uh, you know, volatility and that there is promise, you know, perceived promise of great returns that you should benefit from. It. I like to quote this: "The markets are efficient. If you think that you are good, don't forget there are like uh, millions of people out there who are also, you know." Like you thinking that they are good, what makes you good or exceptional? Well, the answer is, um, you know, like there is a very high chance that you probably are average. You know, you are you are not going to be superior to those millions of other analysts. Don't forget, there are plenty more analysts that hold PhDs and uh, MBAs from uh, the top universities and business schools. What makes you different from the rest? And that's very important to to remind ourselves, right? And I. Uh, I, I think that's a very good reminder. <clears throat> Don't live life by the averages. Um, now, the next thing I'd like to uh, mention, and I, I think that's a very meaningful part from this book, that is the quality of decision making. Right? How do you decide or how do you assess and evaluate the quality of a decision made? Now, uh, let me quote you this. Uh, it was also from this book, and I, I always uh, find it very amusing to you know, recall about this example. I share with all my students or and friends the same example. Okay, the example goes like this. Let's say, for example, you have, a, uh, you know, you have a sum of money and you can choose to build a ski resort in Miami. Now, you know, um, you know that in the the temperature, the climate in Miami, it's unlikely that there will ever be snow, right? Quite unlikely. Unless you know there is uh, severe climate change. Now, if let's say you know you build such a ski resort, there is a high chance that you would lose most of the money. Uh, maybe not most, but all, right? However, let's say you were lucky enough, and then uh, a blizzard came and brought a lot of snow, and then uh, your ski resort became an instant success. Now, what does that tell you about the decision made? Now, the chances of a blizzard happening is. Uh, very remote, you know, quite unlikely, extremely unlikely. But if it happens that there is a blizzard and you had a ski resort there, what does it tell you about the quality of the decision made? It tells you that you just were simply probably quite lucky, right? That you built the resort there and it happened that not long later there was a blizzard and there was snow. So the resort became an instant success. Now, however, you know what? If there was no blizzard and you had a ski resort, no snow came. Uh, what does it show about your decision made? That looks, you know, idiotic, retarded, you know, I mean, whichever way you name it. Right, so the outcome of a decision tells you nothing about the quality of the decision made. Right, uh, 
truly as uh, how Marx has uh, mentioned, and I, I think it's a very meaningful book to, to read, he mentions this that um, many a time it is luck, you know. Uh, the most important thing is luck. You, you can be extremely intelligent, you can be extremely hardworking, you can make a very well thought out decision, but then, you know, at the end, it's, it's luck, you know. But of course, you know, uh, there are many things within our control that we can do to avoid uh, being uh, prone to the whims and fancies of luck. For example, you knew that building a ski resort in Miami would be a bad idea. Why not do not build a ski resort? Uh, you would have avoided the problem of um, making a mistake you know, where that the odds are against you and most likely uh, a blizzard will never come and there will not be any snow in, in, around a ski resort. So uh, that's uh, quality of decision made and uh, quality of decision making. Uh, I find that in my personal life I see many people who boast about their wealth and they say that well they made a lot of money from the stock market. Now in my opinion you know I mean, I happen to be like this for a period of time. I tended to, to think that, whoa, you made a lot of money from the stock market. You must be a genius, right? You must have been extremely talented. You, know, you have high IQ, you know, you have a certain special talent. Perhaps you started reading prospectuses at a very young age. So the, the outcome of decision making you know, says nothing about the quality of decision made. And, that uh, reminded me of all these. You know, that there are all these people that go around and say that they make X dollars from a certain investment or a certain you know venture, but all these are one side of the story. You know, if these people happen to be the one percent that made it, I'm more interested to know the ninety nine percent that, uh, you know, that suffered losses and and never had uh, their misfortunes reported. You know, but. Which uh, Howard Marx also mentioned, I mean, it's both that uh, success tells you nothing about, you know, the about the story behind. You know, right? success you can learn uh, from success stories. Success stories teach you nothing. It is failures that tell you a lot, that teach you a lot more, right? So there is really nothing to learn from successes, right? Wonderful book, and and it's all in the book. Now, um, the. Uh, other thing, and uh, this was one, one point that uh, it caught my attention. And I find that very meaningful. So it says here that, you know, uh, one of the things that we, we do in business school, uh, probably in uh, business degrees, is we learn this thing called expected values. And what is expected value? Basically, you have probability, you have this series of outcomes, and you have probability for each of these outcomes. So what you do is that you multiply each uh, outcome by the probability, and then you add up all the results and you get expected value. Now, uh, that sounds very rational. Okay, that was exactly mentioned in this book. It sounds exactly rational. But what happens if, let's say, there is a particular outcome which involves adverse outcomes and these outcomes are not those that you can deal with? So what should your decision making be? Should it be based on expected values? Or should it be based on the fact that well, there is this certain outcome that you can't deal with, so you shouldn't proceed with that decision. Uh, and that was exactly covered in the book. And I agree with what you said. Expected values is very misleading because uh, if you're going to live life based on averages, you're going to be, you know, at some point in time be, um, yeah, if I can use the word screwed, right? Because you just need one bad outcome to occur, and, and that's enough to ruin you for good, you know. I mean, of course, depending on whether you take leverage position or otherwise. So that's the book by Hallmark, and uh, I find it very meaningful, and I'm reading it for the second time. Right? It didn't take me very long to complete reading. Right? Also, in the same book, he also has, uh, you know, uh, make reference to uh, John Kenneth Galbraith, you know, uh, especially his, uh, one of his, uh, you know, uh, very well written book titled "A Short History of Financial of A Short History of Financial Euphoria." That was an amazing book. I, I read that too. I'll, I'll, I'll prepare a book review on that as well. So uh, there it is. Right, uh, the book written by Howard Marks, the most important thing. Right, very interesting in terms of uh, the principles being uh, taught and shared. Right, in fact, Howard Marks said this. You know, in one of his uh, speeches, he said that he said that the purpose of the book is not to make it make people feel that investment is easy. It's supposed to 
show how hard it is to invest right so uh, you know what if you are looking for something to read then that's an amazing book right I hope that uh, this has been informative to some of you who are thinking of what to read over the weekend right uh, that's Paul Mark's book titled the most important thing right and thank you for watching and uh, have a great day thank you